Let's... Yes. It's seven o'clock. Bong, 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 bong. Okay, yes, seven. So, welcome. And welcome to Scarlet. Yay! I forget their dad's name, but the baby is Esme, the little girl is Scarlet, and we're so happy to have them here. They greatly reduced our average age. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so announcements. Natan has a new class that started last Sunday. It will meet every Sunday at 10 o'clock, in person only, for the next couple of months, except 10.30. At 10.30, he's changed it, I guess. Um, so, but stay tuned, because there may be a reason to have it canceled this Sunday. So, so if you have attended the class, Pay attention to your emails and announcements about that. But we're hoping, fingers crossed, that it will happen. It's called Messianic Movements in Judaism, and if you've missed the first class, you are welcome to attend. We have a Musar study group. We are meeting again this Thursday, June 15th, at 11 o'clock here in the library. It's uh, Musar is kind of um, a study of personal growth, and... Uh, it's it, an old Jewish study. Bruce Hellenberg is definitely leading, leading that group. And it, even if you've missed all the sessions so far, you are still welcome to join. Next week, we're having here the Pride Month service. Rabbi Felix will be back. And Professor Tim Retzloff will be speaking on Stonewall. And the few of us had a good time at the booth during the Ferndale Pride last week. And so I hope we do that again. Um, join your CHJ friends at the theater on Saturday, June 17th for a play at the Detroit Repertory Theater called Sweat. Uh, June, that's an afternoon, a matinee. And then the, and anybody who's interested can go along with the small group to Bow Bob Bear for dinner. The CHJ Potluck and Annual Meeting is here June, June 20th. Daytimers have a pool party planned coming up on June 21st. Maj Guru plays here every Tuesday at 1 p.m. New learners are welcome. We do have a new learners group, a new learners table. Come play on your yoga mats here twice a week, Tuesdays at 11. Karen Lutz leads a gentle yoga, which is lovely. And Wednesdays at 9.30, Connie Grossman leads a more energetic class. Look for members of the program committee during the next few ONEGs who are going to be soliciting suggestions for other activities that you would like to see. Look for announcements of a variety of musical offerings in late summer and fall. There's going to be Bulgarian a Palazzolo special, and an old-timey American group performing. Stay informed. Remember that when you get the newsletter in your email, you may have to click the link at the bottom that says view entire message, or you may miss out on some items that may interest you. Tonight, our readers are Helen Foreman, Saul Foreman, Kate ben -Ami, Susie Friedman, Lonnie Fleischer, and our candle lighters are Harriet Meza and Larry Allen Logan. <clears throat> Shabbat Shalom. So take a moment for all of that and just bring yourself into this space. When we meet each other on Shabbat, we think of Shalom, peace. It's right there in the greeting. Shabbat has always been a symbol of peace. Our ancestors called it a taste of the world to come. The peace that they sought to create on Shabbat teased them with hopes that such calm might one day prevail through the world. Perhaps it was just a fantasy, but it gave them comfort nonetheless. We now understand that a better, more just, and more peaceful future must not be deferred to a world to come. If we desire a better world, we must fashion it ourselves in our homes, our communities, our nation, and the world. We possess the power to make it real. 
Perhaps Shabbat can remind us of that. Shabbat Shalom. As we begin our Sabbath celebration, let it serve as a reminder that the promise of a world of peace can only be kept by the work of our hands. It's the action, not the fruit of the action, that's important. You have to do the right thing. It may not be in your power, may not be in your time, that there will be any fruit. But that doesn't mean you stop doing the right thing. You may never know what results come from your action. But if you do nothing, there will be no result. Ani beata mashanei haolam. Ani beata shomu vakulam. Lo mashanei. Ani ve ata nashan me achalam. Yie la nura en davaz e lo nura. Amru ze korem la panai ze lo mashane. Ani ve ata nashane. If there is to be peace in the world, there must be peace in the nation. If there is to be peace in the nations, there must be peace in the city. If there is to be peace in the cities, there must be peace between neighbors. If there is to be peace between neighbors, there must be peace at home. If there is, there must be peace in our heart. Thank you. Shabbat shalom. tricks to you. He just read it. <laughs>
שם יש מקום בתוכנו, יש מקום בתוכנו. Look within yourself, you'll find it there. There's a place, wisdom that can guide us. There's a place where we know what's right or wrong. Where's the path to peace that we יש מקום בתוכנו, יש מקום בתוכנו. Look within yourself, you'll find it Peace is more than an ideal. It is an achievement. There is no divine power that will give it to us for nothing. There are no laws of history that will guarantee its arrival. Peace is hard work. The forces of war and violence are very strong in our world. They hide in the deep unconscious of our mind. They attach themselves to personal greed. They find a friend in the lust for power. Too often our mouth prefers peace, but our behavior prefers war. We praise love and harmony, but we indulge hate and hostility. We endorse kindness, but we subsidize cruelty. We have to work for peace in the same way that we work for a living. In the age of weapons of mass destruction, it may be even more important. Isaiah prophesied, they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning, fork, pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. The poet Yehuda Amakai wrote, don't stop after beating the swords into plowshares, don't stop. Go on beating and make musical instruments out of them. Whoever wants to make war again, We'll have to turn them into plowshares first. Odivo shalom aleinu, odivo shalom aleinu, odivo shalom aleinu, ve'akulam. 
Odibo Shalom Aleinu. Odibo Shalom Aleinu. Odibo Shalom Aleinu. Ve'akulam Salam. Aleinu ve'akulam Salam. 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 Aleinu ve'akulam Salam. Salam. Odibo Shalom Aleinu. Shalom Aleinu, Odebo Shalom Aleinu, Ve'akulam. Odebo Shalom Aleinu, Odebo Shalom Aleinu, Odebo Shalom Aleinu, Ve'akulam. Salam, Aleinu Ve'akulam, Salam, Salam, Salam. Shalom Aleinu, Odibo Shalom Aleinu, Odibo Shalom Aleinu, Ve'akulam. Odibo Shalom Aleinu, Odibo Shalom Aleinu, Odibo Shalom Aleinu, Ve'akulam. It's me. <laughs> I'm reading this one. <laughs> Peace starts within each one of us when we have inner peace. We can be at peace with those around us. When our community is in a state of peace, it can share peace with a neighboring community, and so on. When we feel love and kindness towards others, it not only makes others feel loved and cared for, but it helps us also to develop inner happiness and peace. The problems we face today, violent conflicts, destruction of nature, poverty, hunger, and so on, are human-created problems which can be resolved through human effort, understanding, and the development of a brotherhood and sisterhood. We need to cultivate a universal responsibility for one another and the planet we share. We have a responsibility to look after our planet. It is our only home. <laughs> community where we find strength and common purpose, we turn our minds and hearts toward all those who need our love and support, those who are ill, those who suffer pain of the body or spirit, those who are lonely, those who have been wronged. Tonight we extend our well wishes to Ruth E. Goldman, Ruth Holtz, Rabbi Peter Schweitzer, Jim Walker, and anybody you're thinking of? Yes? Inez Walker. Inez Walker. Anybody else? Yes? Max Halpern. Max Halpern. May all who suffer know that they are not alone, that we are here. May they be healed quickly. May they experience a refua shlema, a complete recovery, the renewal of their bodies, and the renewal of their spirits. <clears throat> <Sings> 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 
And let us say Shalom. I always look over you. I love to see you all. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. The peace of wild things. When despair for the world grows in me and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the word wood drake wrists in this beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water. Oh, what was that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I, f I feel above me the day blind stars waiting for their light. For a time I rest in the grace, uh, grace of the world and am free. Those babies are beautiful. <laughs> Our thoughts turn to those who are no longer with us, our own loved ones, those whom our friends and neighbors have lost, the martyrs of our people whose graves are unmarked, and those of every people and nation whose lives have been a blessing to humanity. As we remember them, we meditate on the meaning of love and loss of life and death. Tonight we are honoring the yard sites of David ben -Ami, Harry Frazier, Max Halpern, Zenia Lakowitz, Sam Meza, Eugene Scala, Idel Unger, Gerald Wolberg, Sadie Wolberg, and anybody else who you've lost recently, maybe? Yes? Anybody else? Clear the room. We recall now our loved ones whom death has recently taken from us those who died at this season in years past, and those whom we have taken into our hearts with our own. Yehi zichram livracha. May memories of them provide blessing. And if you can comfortably do so, please stand for the humanistic interpretation of Kaddish. Neet kadal v'neet kadash bruach adam. Let us dignify and ennoble all people in the spirit of our shared humanity. Let us acclaim the preciousness of life. Let us show gratitude for life by approaching it with reverence. Let us embrace the whole world, even as we wrestle with its parts. Let us each in our own way take up our share in serving the world and seeking truth. May our commitment to life help us to strengthen healing of spirit and peace of mind. May justice and peace permeate and comfort the house of Israel and all those who dwell on earth. And let us say, Ken Yehi, may it be so. So, in honor of tonight's um, presentation, Joseph has come up with a 
a special song for us. So take it away. Thank you, Melanie. Okay, uh, there's a little rehearsal before because this requires audience participation. That's you. Okay, are you ready? Okay, repeat after me. Deo. 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 We're not going to be singing that right now. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what he was known for. That was his big breakout hit, Harry Belafonte. And uh, he broke all kinds of barriers, which you were going to hear later on in uh, Melanie's talk. Uh, this song, which is the last song in the Teal Hymnal in the Unitarian Universalist Church, which I work at on Sunday morning, I thought would be very appropriate for tonight. Turn the World Around is the name of it, and it's in 5-4. It's, it's kind of a little funky, and that's supposed to be a calypso tune. I'm going to try to do the best that I can. But uh, there is a refrain, and it goes like this. In fact, I'm going to sing the whole refrain. Whoa, so is life. Ah, so is life. Pretty easy. Let's try that. Ready? Oh, so is life. Ah, so is life. One more time. Oh, so is life. Ah, so is life. And then there's another part that goes, there's uh, some African words that are inserted. Abatiwa. Say abatiwa. Abatiwa. So it goes like this. Whoa, so is life abatiwa. So is life. Whoa, so is life abatiwa. So is life. And then the last time the refrain comes, you're going to add something else. You're going to add a ha, huh, like this. Whoa, so is life a bati wa. Ha, so is life. Whoa, so is life a bati wa. Ha, so is life. My goodness, you're good. I thought this was going to take a half hour to do, but uh, you're doing great. Okay, here we go. We come from defire, living in defire. Go back to defire, we'll turn the world around. We come from de water, living in de water. Go back to de water, turn the world around. We come from de mountain, living on de mountain. Go back to de mountain, turn the world around. Whoa, so is life. Ah, so is life. Whoa, so is life. Ah, so is life. Calm down. It's not here yet. Do you know who I am? Do I know who you are? See we one another clearly. Do we know who we are? Do you know who I am? Do I know who you are? See we win another clearly. Do we know who we are? Do you know who I am? Do you know who you are? See we win another clearly. Do we know who we are? Whoa! So is life a batiwa. So is life. Whoa! So is life a batiwa. So is life. Water make the river, river wash the mountain, fire make the sunlight turn the world around. Heart is of the river, body is the mountain, spirit is the sunlight turn the world around. We are of the spirit, truly of the spirit, only can the spirit turn the world around. Oh, so is life a batiwa, ha, so is life. Whoa, so is life a batiwa, ha, so is life. Whoa, so is life a batiwa, ha, so is life. Whoa, so is life a batiwa, ha, so is life.
Ha! So is life. Woo! Nice. Yay. Thank you, Joseph. That was lovely. So, okay. Thank you for the dance, Scarlett. That was lovely, too. <laughs> so, in Jerusalem, a female journalist heard about a very old Jewish man who had been going to the Wailing Wall to pray twice a day, every day, for a long, long time. So she went to check it out. She went to the Wailing Wall, and there he was. She watched him pray, and after about 45 minutes, when he turned to leave, she approached him for an interview. Sir, how long have you been coming to the wall and praying? He answered, for about 60 years. 60 years, she exclaimed. That's amazing. What do you pray for? He answered, I pray for peace. I pray for all the hatred to stop. And I pray for all of our children to grow up in safety and friendship. So, she asked, how do you feel after having done this for 60 years? He replied, like I'm talking to a wall. <laughs> but um, bum. Okay, so. I feel that it's important that when we lose someone or some people who are influential in our spheres, that is Judaism and activism, that we ought to remember and celebrate them. And that's why today's service is on Harry and Harold. So, so you stole my thunder with the Deo, because I was going to do that now, but that's OK. We've already done that. <clears throat> but Harry Belafonte, born in Harlem, New York, is Harold George Belafonte, Jr. in 1927 but spent much of his childhood in Jamaica living with one of his grandmothers before returning to New York as a schoolboy. He did not finish high school and enlisted in the U.S. Navy where he served for two years. After his tour of duty ended, he was honorably discharged where he worked in the garment center and as a janitor's assistant. After doing repairs in one apartment as a gratuity, he was given a ticket to a community theater in Harlem, the American Negro Theater. This opened up a new world for him, one that would be his destiny. He said that he saw theater as a social force, a political force, and art as a powerful tool. He studied with the likes of Marlon Brando, Walter Matthau, B. Arthur, and Tony Curtis. To pay for acting classes, he dabbled in singing at nightclubs. He also pursued his love of jazz at this time. On his first professional appearance, he had Charlie Parker in his backup band. He rose to fame with a banana boat song, Deo, right, in 1956, earning him the nickname of King of Calypso. He devoted himself to global, civil, and human rights issues and used his fame and popularity to do so impactfully. Belafonte supported the civil rights movement in the 1950s and 60s. He was one of Martin Luther King Jr.'s confidants. He used to say that his home or apartment was a place of respite for Martin Luther King. He could come and take his shoes off and relax from all the work he was doing. Hip Belafonte provided for King's family since King earned only $8,000, which is the equivalent of $80,000 today. And that's what he earned his ear as a preacher. As with many other civil rights activists, Belafonte was blacklisted during the McCarthy era. During the 1963 Birmingham campaign, Belafonte bailed King out of the Birmingham, Alabama jail and raised $50,000 to release other civil rights protesters. He contributed to the 1961 Freedom Rides, supported voter registration drives, and helped to organize the 1963 March on Washington. 
He later recalled, Paul Robeson had been my first great formative influence. You might say he gave me my backbone. Martin King was the second. He nourished my soul. Belafonte helped provide the seed money to launch the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. He continued to be an advocate for political and human, cause, human rights causes throughout his career, such as the anti-apartheid movement and USA for Africa. He was a motivator in the We Are the World music event that brought attention to the unrest in Africa due to war, drought, and famine. From 1987 until his death, he was a UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador. But I know one person at least in this room knows that the Calypso King was known as the most popular Jew in America. Harry's life frequently dovetailed with Jewish causes, values, and people. In fact, he brokered a meeting between Nelson Mandela and Jewish leaders in 1989. On a personal note, his second wife, dancer Julie Robinson, was Jewish, and his paternal grandfather was a Dutch Sephardic Jew. His father was largely absent, and his mother, struggling to find work to support her family, developed a relationship with a Jewish tailor who taught her how to mend garments. Harry says that tailor gave me my first sense of kinship with Jews, which would deepen over time. Harry often joked that his performances and recording of Hava Nagila made him the most popular Jew in America. <laughs> Known around the world as King of Calypso, he recorded and performed a wide range of global and folk classics throughout his career. Jewish standards among them, Hava Nagila, Hinema Tov, and Erev Shel Shoshanim. Harry Belafonte died this year on April 25th at the age of 96. President Biden said of Belafonte, he was a groundbreaking American who used his talent, his fame, and his voice to help redeem the soul of our nation. His legacy of outspoken advocacy, compassion, and respect for human dignity will endure. So Harry Belafonte used his, his power through his popularity and fame in order to spread peace and be an activist. But in order to spread peace without, one has to find peace within. And that's what Rabbi Harold Kushner was. He was the kind of role model that showed the way to find peace within. In the advent of Rabbi Kushner's death, Rabbi Falik wrote the following in his weekly commentary. Known for his insightful writings and teachings on spirituality, ethics, and the human condition, Rabbi Kushner came to notable national and international attention with the 1981 publication of his book, When Bad Things Happen to Good People. Prompted by the death of his young son, it examined what theologians call theodicy, the problem of reconciling an all-powerful deity who is also believed to be entirely merciful and good. Rabbi Kushner's solution was to offer a new twist that some have termed limited theism. In short, this way of thinking about God, popular with Jewish thinkers from across the spectrum, resolves the problem of evil by proposing that God is not all-powerful and is actually unable to prevent all the bad things that happen in the world. This say its advocates, is because God created the world and humans with certain laws and principles, including both natural limits and human free will, both of which can lead to suffering and tragedy. On this, Rabbi Kushner said, the theological conclusion I came to is that God could have been all-powerful at the beginning, 
but he chose to designate two areas of life off limits to his power. He would not arbitrarily interfere with laws of nature. And secondly, God would not take away our freedom to choose between good and evil. Here we find a collision of humanistic and theistic thought. Rabbi Falik finds that a key consequence of this approach is its teaching that in such a world as ours, humans alone must bear the responsibility to take the necessary action to alleviate suffering and make it a better place. So I'm not here today to challenge Rabbi Kushner's belief in God. Rabbi Wine himself said that he built this movement on the premise that God is not an issue. And so I agree that what one man believes should not detract from his humanism. And so we will focus on Rabbi Kushner and his compassionate teachings. We are here to memorialize a man who was able to reach people in times of crisis and help them find their peace within. The world is now in crisis. It seems more often than not these days. Rabbi Kushner says that the question is not to ask why bad, why bad things happen to people, because then two things come up. Number one, we are looking for a scapegoat, a doctor, a partner, a repairman. And two, we are looking into the past. The better question to ask is when something happens, what are you going to do now? Why focus on the past? In a foreword to a 2006 reprint of Frankel's Man's Search, Man's Search for Meaning, Kushner reminded readers, forces beyond your control can take away everything you possess except one thing, your freedom to choose how you will respond to the situation. He taught many such lessons by aphorism through his writings and radio and television interviews here are just a few. Forgiveness is a favor we do for ourselves, not a favor we do for the other party. I like to think of it this way, that when I forgive someone who has wronged me, that feeling of being wronged no longer takes up real estate in my mind or body. He said, the purpose in life is not to win. The purpose in life is to grow and to share. When you come to look back on all that you have done in life, you will get more satisfaction from the pleasure you have brought into other people's lives than you will from the times that you outdid and defeated them. So let's revisit that man praying at the Wailing Wall 60 years, and maybe this quote from Rabbi Kushner would give his ritual more meaning. People who pray for miracles usually don't get miracles, any more than children who pray for bicycles, good grades, or good boyfriends get them as a result of praying. He wrote, but people who pray for courage, for strength to bear the unbearable, for the grace to remember what they have left instead of what they have lost, very often find their prayer answered. So although we in this place may not pray to a divine force, as we sing the song a fo o re we remember that that light that we try to keep burning, that courage, that strength is within us and our fellow man. Rabbi Kushner died on April 28th at the age of 88. So let me close with Rabbi Kushner's poem, A Prayer for the World. This poem made the rounds just after 9-11, even though it was not written for that incident. He wrote, let the rain come and wash away the ancient grudges, the bitter hatreds held and nurtured over generations. Let the rain wash away the memory of the hurt, the neglect. Then let the sun come out and fill the sky with rainbows. 
Let the warmth of the sun heal us wherever we are broken. Let it burn away the fog so that we can see each other clearly, so that we can see beyond labels, beyond accents, gender, or skin color. Let the warmth and brightness of the sun melt our selfishness so that we can share the joys and feel the sorrows of our neighbors. And let the light of the sun be so strong that we will see all people as our neighbors. Let the earth, nourished by rain, bring forth flowers to surround us with beauty. And let the mountains teach our hearts to reach upward to heaven. Amen. And that ends my presentation. Thank you so much. Before I, before I forget, so let's thank Joseph for his music. Let's thank David for his streaming and for taking the place of Arthur tonight with the slides, which you can move ahead two slides now. <laughs> and, and to Mo for helping us with the Oneg tonight. And thank you to you all for being here. Peace be with you wherever you go. Peace be with you whatever you do. Peace be with you till we meet again. Peace be with you, my friend. Love be with you wherever you go. Love be with you whatever you do. Love be with you till we meet again. Love be with you, my friend. Joy be with you wherever joy be with you whatever you do joy be with you till we meet again joy be with you my friend shalom alechem shalom 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 alechem shalom 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 alechem shalom 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 Aleichem, Shalom. Shalom Aleichem. Shabbat Shalom. Hava Nakila Hava Nakila Hava Nakila Venes Macha Hava Nakila Hava. Nakila, hava. 